Okay, I'm in bed. I've got Sweetie just here and she's doing that thing. But of course, the phone is on this tripod thing. So Sweetie's moving around and doing all of this and moving things around, aren't you, babe? But let's get her on camera. You're gonna come over here, Sweetie, come on. Come. Come here, come on. Oh, there's a good girl. Oh, fuck, oh, excuse the language. Okay, she clawed the bed and then pulled up the cover. So that's not gonna work. If anybody's here and wants to say hello, then please do. Oh, Hilary. Hi, Hilary. I feel like I have to be all like low key because I'm in bed. I don't know why. So we're going to keep it low key. And I just got some fragrances that to me are my most long lasting on my skin. And I thought that would be a nice uh little list to go through with you, uh, whoever chooses to watch whilst um, or before I get ready to go to sleep. So if you are watching, say hello. Uh, Scent Alchemist, hi. How's you be? Hopefully very happy. And uh, Hilary got her rose essence from Ellie Saab. Um, oh, have you tried it yet, Hilary? Let me know what you think. I'm going to feel responsible if you don't like it. I hope you do. I love it. As you know, I still love it. I still, honestly, every every single day, I'm spraying it somewhere. If not wearing it, it on its own, then I'm spraying it on a piece of skin because I'm really loving it. Um, not necessarily the opening as much as sort of about half hour in. I like it. It's dark and sweet. Yes. Uh, hi, Timothy. Just got carnal flower. I can't. Ooh. I hear or read it's a beast. We'll see. Mm. Yeah, so strong, strong tuberose. Uh, wearing Amber Absolute today, I'd say it's a beast. Amber Absolute is definitely a beast. So I've got some, what I consider beastly performing fragrances not necessarily all massive projectors but long lasting really really long lasting on my skin how was my day Hilary it was lovely so I went for that walk in the woods it was a really long walk so you walk um you walk through a uh, sort of like a private road type thing hi Neil have you tried Penna's dark incense I got a sample it's taken me some crazy dark places I think I did a long time ago or a little while ago I think I did try it um yeah my day so a really nice walk and I got as before I got to the woods I found this bee on the path and um it, it was just kind of like walking along but it didn't look quite right so uh, he tried to fly and he couldn't so then I kind of put him on my hand and he tried to fly again, uh, but he couldn't. So I let him crawl back onto my hand and we were together for about half an hour, 45 minutes. He just calmly uh, laid up, laid in my hand and we just walked along. And um, luckily he recovered and revived and off he flew. So that was really nice. That's really the main thing that I did today. It was quite a long walk, uh, good three hours out of the day was doing that and then I've had a bit of a lazy evening I ended up getting some Chinese food from just my next door neighbor actually runs a Chinese shop that's just down the road so I went and got some Chinese food had a nice little chat and a catch up with her because I never see her because she's so busy running the Chinese place so I got a little bit of Chinese food still I didn't get any rice or bread or anything but Chinese is not the best, it's really not keto food. There's definitely probably quite a lot of sugar in there. So not exactly keto, but still um, I didn't have rice or bread. So there's that. Hi, Scott. Oh, the bee whisperer. Yes. Bzzz. 
yeah, I'm now the bee whisperer. Uh, Neil, bee wee, nature's golden shower. Yes. <laughs> I'm not the kind of girl that wants to get pissed on, if I'm honest with you. It's just not a, a kink that that I have. But I thoroughly enjoyed getting pissed on by this bee today. And I guess it was only a little bit of, uh, of golden juice, so it was all right. But yeah, so I've had a lovely day. Has everyone else had a good day? What are you wearing? Or what was your scent of the day? What's your scent of the night? And Hilary gets pissed on daily. That's because she's an animal groomer, by the way. She's not a prostitute or, um, yeah. Well, sorry, I'm just not even gonna, I need to stop. I need to stop. Um, yeah, how was your day, everyone? And what are you wearing? What were you wearing? And I was wearing, when I was out on my walk, I had on a Renaissance 1861. Uh, Scott, uh, Tom Ford Noir de Noir tonight. Very nice. Rose, bit of a rose oud, I think, isn't it? Uh, comes off a bit chocolatey. I don't know it brilliantly well because I do hide away from the ouds. But uh, I know it gets a lot of love from rose lovers. So I wore 1861. And today was long hard day honestly my state has been uh hang on my state has been out into a state of emergency for the coronavirus wow so what does that actually mean hillary what how, how does that affect you are you supposed to avoid going out as much as you can what's what's all what's actually happening with that state of emergency situation so i wore 1861 from zerzhov which is very fresh and very long lasting actually, I should have bought it because believe it or not, for a freshie, after Shave Dave, hello, for a freshie, it lasts really well. So it literally lasted me. I sprayed it at home, which was about half 11 this morning. I got back from my walk, gone three in the afternoon and it was still going strong. And I was uh, right, into, right into the evening. I'm still smelling it, still smelling it. I finally decided, even though I'm still smelling it, I decided to spray something else on top. What did I spray? Um, Angelique from uh, Papillon, I put, now put on top. And on this wrist I've got over the chocolate shop from 4160 Tuesdays because uh, us fraggeds, we're always spraying stuff, aren't we? Uh, uh, Scott says the lovely Rose and Joan sent me some that will be the uh, Tom Ford uh, um, I forgot what it's called <laughs> the Rose one Noir de Noir and Hilary says uh, current oh, current level of emergencies mostly for awareness and to prepare for emergency procedures head of the grooming school is literally having my write a salon safety course this evening on sanitation procedures and emergency preparedness for all American salons bloody hell wow that's a bit of uh yeah that's a bit hard work um good luck with that Hillary um yeah shit uh floating man good evening hello so yes welcome to my bedroom everyone in bed with Smurfy hi Robert hello in bed with Smurfy, DV70. So I basically, I am a slut because here you are. Like, this is what, we've got 19 people watching. So this is a 20 person, uh, 20 persons in my bedroom. So yeah, I mean, that's about the sluttiest I've ever been. Uh, Hillary, pets can also get corona, but most are vaccinated. Oh, I didn't know that. I had no clue. Because normally animals don't get our diseases and vice versa. I know there's a few exceptions. Uh, Hilary, I've always wanted to be in bed with some Murphy girly. Uh, just said, like, did I come early, too early? Uh, yeah, you did come a bit too early. We're talking about longevity here and, and you've come too early. I mean, come on. I mean, well, don't, don't. Uh, 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 oh yeah, Neil Smith, as I said, our own Madonna, yes he did, uh, a proper orgy. Floating man, my medical rotations have been put on hold until further notice. Oh shit. So this is really affecting everyone. I mean obviously it's, um, it's, effect it's affected me in that I was supposed to go to Essence and 
that's now been postponed and that's that's quite a minor thing but yeah I mean obviously it's really kind of haven't seen any news today so when I'm at work the radio's on and I get news updates and obviously I could look at my phone for news but I'm always looking at my phone for perfumes <laughs> so I, I was I'm out of touch today I haven't I haven't even looked at a news article today I don't think no I haven't so completely out of touch but um just yeah everyone keeps safe uh Aminta, hello, just woke up early and straight to your live session. Hi, nice that you can join us. And do check out, I hope I'm saying it right, Aninda's uh, YouTube channel. She has a lovely YouTube channel. So if you don't already know, go and have a look. because She's a very sweet and lovely lady uh, with great perfume stories. Floating man probably as a precautionary measure due to the recent large influx of Italian medical students. Okay. So sweet is just down here, um, you purring away. I don't know if you'll catch that on the camera. I'll give her a little stroke, see if we can turn up the volume. You have to listen quite hard. Oh, she's so sweet. She's so sweet. I love my little girl. So um, let's talk about some long lasting perfumes, shall we? Because that's the premise I got you all here on, whether or not I'm up to no good, is another matter. So I'm going to start with this one, and this is Lune Feline from Atelier des Ours. Neil, can you let me know how over the chocolate shop works on your skin? Every chocolate fragrance I've tried starts out gorgeous, soon loses its delicious flavour. Over the chocolate shop. So it's um, it's a combination of to me it's quite a dark dry chocolate and a coffee and a bit of a hazelnut feel um, and it actually stays quite similar all the way through so on my skin it's a beautiful rich chocolate gourmand from start to finish with just a few uh, just a minor change I think it might get a little bit woodsy but I can't remember I did review it a long time ago so my review will be on my channel but um I can't now remember exactly how it behaves because I haven't given it a full wearing in a long time but it is really beautiful dark powdery like cocoa powder kind of feel to it as well I don't think unless you have some kind of weird shit going on with your skin chemistry I don't think you'll have a problem with over the chocolate shop uh, really, really nice fragrance. And I just saw a comment from Sentient Man. Uh, so Raj says he's going to self-isolate in Harrods fragrance department. Good idea. I might do the same. Just hi, Just Jane. So Just Jane also has a lovely YouTube channel, as does Raj, the Sentient Man. But I'm sure you all know that. Floating Man uh, is laughing. Haha, <laughs> not a bad idea. At self-isolating in Harrods. I might self-isolate in uh, Liberty or Fortnum and Mason, maybe. Fortnum and Mason, and then I'm going to eat all their chocolates and cakes and stuff. Mind you, Harrods have got amazing cakes. Harrods have got amazing everything. Anyway, long-lasting fragrance, Lune Feline, Atelier des Ours. It's it's all about vanilla and spices, but when you first smell it, it's not necessarily straight away vanilla-y. It's rich, it's a little bit sweet. To me, it reminds me of saffron, the way that kind of smells red, rich, and uh, very deep. Um, Floating Man says, lovely tea and coffee too at Fortnum's, yes. And yeah, so this is uh, it's quite resinous, and the vanilla in here is really beautiful. Not too sweet, kind of woody, has a bit of a natural feel. This lasts absolutely ages on my skin. So if I wear that to work on a 12 hour shift, that will take me all the way through, including driving there and back. That's literally more than a whole day I get from wearing Loon Feline. I do spray quite generously because it's not um, it's not a crazy too dominating fragrance. 
it's um, it's not a skin scent either. It does project nicely, but you can overspray that one. I think fairly safely, and I really like it, and it lasts for ages. And we all like it sometimes when things last for ages, don't we? I mean, sometimes you want a quickie, but I mean, we're talking about lasting quite a long time in this particular video while we're here in bed with me we're lasting all right so next up I have brought my alien to bed with me alien essence absolute and this one lasts so well again it will get me through the whole 12 hour shift and and beyond and there's the jasmine sandback that you get in the original alien and you can recognize it you recognize this is a flanker of alien without question but the thing that alien does is, is it overtakes most people's bodies and uh, sort of walks into the room before they do but this doesn't do that so this one it radiates off your skin nicely so it will project sort of like this much so now we're not just talking about long longevity we're talking about length just the length we're not talking about the girth so this lasts really really well and it gives you a nice bubble of fragrance a good projection but not in your face over the top it's got a very woodsy vanilla that's kind of spicy is almost like a slight hint of booziness you have the jasmine from the original alien and there's a note of white amber but i cannot figure out and i have googled it and i've researched it i can't figure out what white amber exactly is and what role therefore it must play in this fragrance i do not know but it does have an ambery feel without being full on amber but it definitely has resin resins in here as well and it's gorgeous it's quite sweet very strong almost certainly a cold weather fragrance however i would probably still wear it in spring and on sort of cooler summer evenings i think it's a great party fragrance it's a really fun going out out kind of fragrance Uh, Greggy boy spriggers see you soon Greggy boy HBL um, just said like isn't white amber ambergris Sarah McCartney once mentioned it maybe it's just strange that they that even on Fragrantica and on the Mugler website they just call it white amber and yeah I just can't find out too much about it whether it, it actually is white ambergris um I don't know but I don't get any kind of salty element I don't really find it that musky it's much more rich resinous and sweet with jasmine so I really don't know um, that's a mystery to me Neil which long-lasting gourmand would you like your man to wear in bed with you um, that's a good one hmm Let's think. So I wouldn't want it to be too sweet because I like wearing the really sweet stuff. And I think for me, a masculine fragrance wouldn't go too sweet. I'd probably go for Tom Ford Noir Extreme because that's gourmand without going too sweet. It's quite gourmand, but it's not full on. It's still masculine. It's quite sexy. So yeah, I'd do that and yeah or maybe which not necessarily a gourmand but has vanilla is a fahrenheit parfum i find that really really beautiful and sexy but because of that extra vanilla it just almost has that slightly edible feel to it so yeah either one of those would be great if you can send a, a scented man this way i mean not, i'm being greedy i've now got 25 of you in bed with me i can't really ask for more can i or can I? <laughs> just, just, just Jane says, yes, Fahrenheit. Yeah, Fahrenheit for the win, boys. Well, for the win with our certain ladies, I guess some ladies might find it old fashioned if they have sort of 
creates certain scent memories, but for me, I find it very, very sexy. I love it. So let's move on then. I've got two from the house of Papillon Perfumery. Um, so I'm going to show you both of them, and they both last astoundingly well. So we've got Bengal Rouge and Tobacco Rose. Look at that. Almost, almost done. The thing is with Tobacco Rose, it's so potent that you don't need a lot. So both of these fragrances are very potent. They both last. They would both take me through my 12-hour shift without a shadow. Probably Bengal Rouge just pips Tobacco Rouge at the post for longevity. Bengal Rouge is crazy, like probably 20 hours on my skin. And I'm not the only one. There's lots of people that say the same. But Tobacco Rose feels more potent and like you would use a lot less of it. So I spray Bengal Rouge quite heavily because I love the fuzzy, cosy dry down. Tobacco Rose is more savoury, less sweet, and it does last really well, but it definitely project. I feel like it projects a lot more, and I feel like I need to be more careful with the sprays of Tobacco Rose. Uh, Floating Man, would Gourmand be your genre of choice for nocturnal relations? Um, um, not necessarily, no. I think um, quite a simple sort of salty, woody smell would be quite good. You know, something quite simplistic, something like Hermes, uh, Eau de Marveille. Um, something, you know, like the kind of like the Aventus DNA with, without maybe all the fruitiness. Something that's just got that sexy ambergris dry down kind of thing. I think that would work. So Tobacco Rose, is uh, it's got beeswax in it, which is great because today I had an encounter with a bee. It's got beeswax in it and uh, hay and it has this savoury thing going on. It's not that sweet. So the, there's rose, I think there's a bit of patchouli, um, there's ambergris in here and uh, Liz Moores uses real ambergris by the way. And this to me, actually a, bl a bloke wearing that would be great in the bedroom I think I uh, really I find it really sexy I feel sexy when I wear it but because it's not too sweet it totally feels like a man uh, could wear that one. Oh, another one I love is Dior Homme Parfum and it's the dry down of that is so out of this world sexy I think and so that's Tobacco Rose and then Bengal Rouge this is uh, it's completely different it's so a lot sweeter it opens up with quite a strong honey note but that honey doesn't hang around forever um and it's very spicy it's got a very spicy tonka bean there's sandalwood there's a bit of rose and it's a little bit intensey and resinous it's just the most beautiful ambery cozy fuzzy hug of a fragrance so when you get sort of a couple of hours into it it's almost caramel or hot chocolate it just feels like um this most comforting uh delectable delights without being overtly sweet but it is fairly sweet so that's bengal rouge and that definitely lasts forever it lasts really 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 well so they're from papillon perfumery i'll just make sure that i haven't missed any comments steve simmons hi greetings and uh, just said like what about diurnal relations I'm afraid I'm not intellectual enough to know what that means floating man says nice okay oh Jimbo hiya hi Smurfy Nation I'm at happy hour so I can't hear a damn thing oh shame you'll have to watch it back Jimbo okay so let's move on to another fragrance so can you hear my cat now She's really all spread out here. I wonder if I can show you. She's not facing the camera though. There she is. Uh, sweetie for you. 
little bit of fuss. So not only do I invite you all into my bedroom, I show you my pussy as well. So, um, yeah, make what you want of that. <laughs> Just James. Oh, she's so sweet. She's the best company ever. <laughs> okay, then. So, uh, today I had an encounter with a bee and... Actually, Bee by Zoologist is a really fantastic, long-lasting fragrance. Uh, Wayne is having a laugh and a bit of a giggle. Daniel-san. Hi, Daniel-san. A bit of a smile. Oh, sweetie, you're so cute. She's facing me now. So, Bee, BB. My, that was my bumblebee, BB. <laughs> I was such a child. Um, uh, who's the fox on your pillow? I haven't got foxes. Are you talking about my cat? Um, on my bedding, I've got... Um... Oh, oh, I think you might mean that. Yes, I've got mismatched bedding, so <laughs> that's different. But they're like, yeah, pin-ups. I like pin-ups. I'm a, I'm a fan of a pin-up. Oh, not the lady. Okay, I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> so yes, Bee by Zoologist is a, a really gorgeous gourmand fragrance. It's, to me, it smells a little bit like crunchy bars. I say that every single time I talk about it. A honeycomb, sugary honeycomb, syrupy, and the opening is very vibrant. There's ginger syrup. It's sweet. It's zesty. It's a bit orangey. But when it dries down, it's, it gets the heliotrope coming out, which is a slightly almond, fuzzy, fluffy note, heliotrope and a bit of vanilla. It's a little bit incensey in the dry down as well. It lasts really, really well. Not maybe, not quite as long as, say, the, um, the ones I've shown you so far, but definitely a good 10 hours. And it's not a big projector after the first couple of hours. It's noticeable and you'll notice it for you for pretty much the duration of the wearing, but it's a lighter projector. So once you've gone past that first hour, it's probably projecting about this much. So as you move around, you'll catch whiffs of it yourself, but it's not beasting out massively in front of you. I actually really like the performance of B. I think it's perfect. You don't have to worry about overspraying this one as well. You can totally get away with lots of sprays. However, I do love the bee perfume that lasts on me well. Yeah, I think it's excellent. I mean, obviously, you know, we're talking about how things are performing for me on my skin, in my climate, blah de blah de blah Things may be different for everyone else. You have to bear that in mind. So I would never say just buy something. You should totally test stuff at home in your own time and see how things work on you. But bee works really, really well on me. I really love this one, really gorgeous, sugary, honey-like, honeycomb delight. So then, let's move on to this one, Sappho. This is a lush perfume and it's iris, tobacco, a little bit of vanilla. There's some jasmine in here, but this is not the jasmine of say like your Tom Ford, uh, what's the red, rouge one? Um, you know the one I mean, that it's a, a vibrant rouge, uh, rouge something. Why can't I remember it? Someone remind me, what's the, uh, what's the Tom Ford jasmine fragrance in the red bottle? I'm sure it's called jasmine rouge probably, <laughs> yes. It's jasmine rouge, rouge, isn't it? Which to me is a very heady, Yes, thank you, Steve. A very, everyone's like, Jasmine Rouge, Jasmine Rouge, Jasmine Rouge. <laughs> thank you, Joss. Um, yeah, it's a very heady, it smells like a holiday in a bottle to me. And it's not that kind of jasmine in here. That's what I'm trying to say. The jasmine in here is very calm and smooth. I mean, it does kind of lift things a little bit. But it's not a jasmine that owns the fragrance. So jasmine plays a, an important part. But actually, to me, the iris and the tobacco 
are the main players here and uh, the jasmine i think just adds it, ne it needed some if you just had the oris the vanilla and the tobacco it would be a beautiful scent that probably would smell like your skin but better you add the jasmine and that brings it into the realms of this is actually definitely a perfume now and not just a uh, your skin but better if that makes sense but if you took the jasmine out this would still be stunning this has got real oris root natural oris root it's got real jasmine it's got real tobacco absolute i think it's tobacco leaf absolute i'm never going to be able to read that but it is beautiful and i wore this quite a few times uh, in the last couple of weeks and it definitely got me all the way through that 12 hour working day so absolutely longevity is amazing these aren't that expensive as well, which I love. Um, I think it's about 60 pounds, 30 mils. So it is two pound a mil, but this is, the quality here is outstanding. Um, Tina, your puns, Claire. Well, I went to Lush, but they don't have Sappho at my local store. But I do love, what would love do, as it's so fresh for spring? Yeah, that's a really beautiful one. I think that's the one with a bit of almond in it, isn't it? But it's kind of like, fresh and lovely yeah so sappho really great longevity projection more like b uh in that it's not a massive projector but you do notice it all day long so it's not a skin scent none of these at all are skin scents they're all noticeable i don't really like fragrances that act as skin scents if i can't smell my own fragrance as i'm going about my daily stuff then to me that's a, that's a day wasted. I could have worn something else. I wear fragrance for me foremost. And I consider I consider my surroundings and the people that I'll be seeing it for, for that particular day or night. That's always a part of my choosing my fragrance. But primarily, I want to smell it. That's the reason why I wear it. That's the re reason why I love fragrances. And I'm sure it's probably the same for all of you. So if it dries down within an hour or two, like really close to the skin, it's not going to be a fragrance for me. It's just not going to work. So let's move on then. I've got two from the House of 4160 Tuesdays. Uh, in general, this is not a 100% rule, but in general, 4160 Tuesdays do last really well. Not as mega bomb mega bombers the uh, papillons some of them some of them are but as a general rule if you if you took everything from the house and then you um times it and then divided it by itself <laughs> you know that that maths you do to get averages um you'd find you'd probably say that the average longevity is about eight to nine hours some of them are, are longer some of them are shorter but in general uh, 4162 so it lasts very last well so i've got shazam here this is a little bit of an underrated star from the house you don't hear too many people talk about it wafts from the loft rate this very highly and i rate them very highly and i've had this uh, i've had shazam in my collection for uh, many years hi nick thanks for popping by and uh shazam kind of it opens for me a bit like mold spiced wine also a little bit like a christmas pomanda and then what happens is as it dries down it gets richer and there's some resins in here there's definitely labdanum and it's got that sticky labdanum dry down which is only in a few things that i've noticed so far so it's in sheep propalatan it's, I believe it's in that rose essence number one that I get a feel of that in there and there's one other thing I was going to say but I've forgotten but it's got this beautiful sticky labdanum resin in the dry down which is utterly delectable I've actually put some up here we're not quite at the resin stage yet because I only sprayed it a little while ago but it is really really beautiful almost smells a bit rosy i'm not sure if there's any rose in there i don't it might not be but it's just rich rich yet still diffusive it's not heavy if that makes sense it's 
so it's got a richness to it without it being thick and cloying it's a really really stunning fragrance and that is called shazam and then the other one from the house is the centerpiece parfum centerpiece has honey frangipani green tea i think there's a bit of vanilla this is the overdosed honey version so um accidentally uh, at 4160 Tuesdays HQ they put a bit too much honey in the formula and uh, so that's and what's great about the house is they do often if they do make um, things that they didn't mean to make then they will often sell them off as long as they're obviously palatable and good they will sell them off as specials and things and you get them for good prices so I got this for a good price it was in the sale and it's really, really rich, beautiful, very crowd pleasing. I've had compliments wearing this one. It's a bit sweet, but it's still unusual. Um, I think, I'm not sure if there's a little bit of chocolate in there. Uh, Tina, I have to go. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye, Tina. Thanks for popping in. Yeah. Yeah, it almost smells a little bit chocolatey, almost like a white chocolate. Anyway, it's beautiful and it lasts, it lasts very, very well. So that's why I bought it to bed with us. And I have three more left. So my old favourite, Powder and Dust. This one lasts very, very well. It's a very rich, it's extracted parfum. I'm spraying my shoulder because I love it so much. So here we go. Oh, the first blast. I guess what the first blast is ever so slightly weird. Not everyone loves the opening of powder and dust. It doesn't take long, literally minutes before it changes. I actually quite enjoy the opening, but I I would probably if I was going out if I was going out on a date, for example, I'd spray half an hour before I left the house just to let it settle into the point where it really gets amazing. So this has got a really gorgeous pear note in it and I think that's the, the main reason why I love it so much. But it's it's like pear drops and lemon drops. So it's sugared, sugared pear, sugared lemon, very syrupy. There's mimosa, which is a yellow floral, which uh, would normally be a bit powdery. And there's definitely vanilla in here and it's musky and it's rich and it's beautiful and it lasts really, really well. So I am a huge fan. It's definitely way up there. It's one of my absolute favorite fragrances of all time. And I just adore it. So, and love the fact that it performs so well because we all love a good performance, don't we? So that's Powder and Dust. And we're down to the last two. So I've, I've got 11 altogether. So I, I didn't want to miss anything out just to make it 10. So you've got 11. I'll probably put, I might change the title and I'll probably put top 10 in there because that would get people to watch. And then when they find out there's an extra one, with any luck, they'll see that as a bonus rather than trickery. What do you think about that? Nick, I love wearing powdery frags in bed and smell the talcy dry down when I wake up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really nice. I tell talking about that actually. I'll move on to this one. So this is one I love wearing to bed, the lover's tail. And the reason being is the dry diff, so it lasts so long that even if I'm having a mega lay-in, oh sweet is properly, I've got to show you, sweetie. Look at her. Oh, you can see this, there's some rubbish on my floor. Look at her, she's so sweet, aren't you? It's all right. It's all right, sweetie, isn't it? There we go, right. <laughs> there we go, showed you my pussy again. I'm not gonna charge you extra. So the lover's towel, Francesca Bianchi, the reason I love wearing it to bed is because the, this gets better and better the longer you wear it on your skin and because it lasts so long you are guaranteed to still smell it when you wake up 
no matter how long you stayed in bed for and the smell of it the next day is so gorgeous so gorgeous so this one has lots of iris in it it's iris and suede again there's some resins there's a whole ton of things in here i can't even remember i get some uh, something like vetiver i can't remember if there's actual vetiver but it feels like it dries into a vetiver part part way through the wearing of it but it's really the main star of the show i think is the oris it's a tiny bit peachy as well which i wouldn't normally like but uh, almost like mitsuko mitsuko peachiness i'd say um this is like a the extended version of mitsuko the kind of deluxe imagine if someone decided to deconstruct mitsuko and then turn it into a deluxe edition of extra extra big mitsuko kind of like that but yeah lots and lots of powdery natural iris it's absolutely beautiful so that's the lover's tale perfect scent to go to bed for sleep or for whatever else you might be planning to do so finally then i've got my lovely bottle of dendera centauri dendera so we all know this is from uh, peter who has a channel fragrance view he has created the most stunning bottle ever and dendera is very smoky it's very smoky and very spicy but it's very dried dry spices and then when it dries down it's more of an amber fragrance i think there's a bit of rose in here there is a little bit of vanilla and there's vetiver as well so you do get the vetiver that comes out after you've been wearing it a little while not immediately amy have you sold off decants or did you wear that much no i um i went halves with robert um so the lovely robert crawford who hopefully you're still watching are you still here robert um he bought half the bottle and bless him he let me keep this stunning bottle so no i haven't used all of that because it's so potent you really don't need to use much I'm finding quite often that I'm layering this one. So I might do one spray of Dendera about here and maybe some some rose, as rose, uh, my like my Ellie Saab rose on my arms. Uh, Amy, everyone loves Dendera. I plan to try it soon. Yeah, I recommend it. Hi, Dan. So I've now got, yeah, so currently we've got 26 people in my bed and a cat. Oh no, that's 26 watching, no, 25 watching now, someone's buggered off, and, uh, and me and my cat, and we're all here talking about long-lasting stuff, long-lasting perfumes, of course. So yeah, uh, I didn't wear all of that, I um, shared the bottle with the lovely Robert Crawford, who is a star amongst a fragcom. So yeah, Dendera is very smoky, very dry, spicy. Then it kind of warms up on your skin. The vetiver does start to come out. The vetiver is kind of dry and grassy at the same time. And it does really bring to mind how you imagine the pyramids might smell, the tombs and um, the rotting corpses of pharaohs. <laughs> I'm joking, it absolutely, oh sweetie's gone, it doesn't smell like rotting corpses, it kind of feels a tiny bit leathery as well, but longevity wise, crazy long lasting, again more than 12 hours, you can wear it as spray at night and wake up the next day and smell it, um, I got an unsolicited compliment from an Uber driver, I'd been wearing it a good three hours and, and the Uber driver gave me a very uh, strong compliment so he's, he sort of said you smell amazing like he was literally amazed so as much as it might seem a little bit polarizing because it's so smoky and dry it's clearly it was a winner for for one uber driver in madeira at least but yeah i really love it and i like as i say i like to layer it 
So I might do just one spray or two sprays and then elsewhere have something else quite simplistic uh, like a, a straight up vanilla type scent or a straight up rose because they are in here anyway and they're probably the two things I would like to amp up. If I was to say to Peter make me a bespoke perfume I would say amp up the rose, amp up the vanilla, but it's absolutely beautiful as it is. It's a really, really gorgeous fragrance and it lasts very, very well. So that's why it's here and that's why I'm waving it at you in my bed. So that is it. That is all of the perfumes I've got for you. And I feel like I probably need to go to bed now. So thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all very, very soon, I hope. As usual, it's been a pleasure. Good night, everyone. Sleep tight.